Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, or as I like to call it, Fri-yay. So I'm gonna tag you guys. All right, I just tagged you all. Eating my banana. So I wanted to do some sketching of a pansy on my um, iPad in Procreate. I thought this might be, good morning, Christine. I thought this might be a cool way to kind of do like a drawing lesson. Good morning, Denise. How are you guys? Thanks for joining me. I'm waving at you. Happy Friday. Um, so let me get this unlocked and going here. I downloaded a couple of pansy photos, you know, on the internet. Whoa, it's a little chilly this morning. And um, I'm on my decaf coffee. <laughs> Maybe it'll keep me a little bit warm. So, um, okay, I'm gonna turn the camera down and I'm just gonna start like sketching and stuff. And I thought this might be a cool way to do a drawing lesson. Like I, like I just said, I'm repeating myself already. <laughs> Let's see how this works. Um, all right, now that's not working too great. Get it a little closer. Oh, fix the lighting a little bit. Hmm. Um. <laughs> I can't see the screen. All right, well, let's just go into Procreate and see how, see how it works. So um, I'm gonna go a new file, eight and a half by 11. And I'm gonna just, on my first layer, I'm gonna bring in a photo. So this I thought was a really nice reference of a pansy and I can make it nice and big okay add a new layer and I'm gonna sketch on this layer <clears throat> so my first layer layer one is my photo and I'm not gonna draw right on my photo I'm gonna draw on layer two and once you pick your layer, you have to decide how you're gonna draw. I'm gonna go to sketching and pick my tool. So I, I have discovered that I really like using the 6B pencil. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, um, Christine and Denise. So um, let's just start with the 6B pencil and see how that uh, looks. So over here, I can decide the brush size or the size of my pencil stroke, which that's not bad. If I make it really tiny, you can't really see it. That's too thin. When you see me d tapping with two fingers on my screen, I'm erasing the last thing I did. I can also uh, decide how opaque I want my pencil mark to be. So here's a pencil mark that's really, um, 100% opaque and it's the biggest size I can make it so that might be a little bit too much if I turn down the opacity of it um, 
and I use a lighter stroke, it won't show quite as much. So, so maybe that's not too bad, at least for the sake of you guys seeing it. So um, I thought I would just, yeah, I think this will be a cool way to kind of teach how to draw things. So, um, all right, let's, let's start drawing one. And you guys could probably follow along and do this too if you wanted to. Um, all right, so I think what you really want to start with is you want to think of this in terms of the, that there's three petals. There's this center point here, you know, so maybe I'll draw this little circle in here. And there's this thing here. So let me just turn this off. Let me turn this picture off and you see what I started with. Is that big enough? Can you guys see that? And can you hear me and stuff? Good morning, good morning. So I'm gonna go back to this. Let me know if you can see that well enough. And the first thing I'm gonna do is draw in this bottom petal. It's got some little ruffles to it. But overall, you know, note, we're just gonna notice the shape now. I don't really know what I would call that shape. It's kind of a triangle. I guess it's kind of a triangle if I had to, if I had to really put a name to it. Let me add another layer. Um, and I'll pick another color. It's, well, oh, sorry, <laughs> layer three. Let me pick a red. Why isn't it doing that? Good morning, Lisa. I want to show the shape. Oh, I wasn't picking in the right area, that's why. It's a triangle. Think of it as a triangle. Right? Good, good, good. So, step one of a pansy, we're doing a pansy, is this kind of bell shape with a circle and then a triangle. But of course, we're rounding it off, you know, where it's a rounded triangle. Okay, that's that's step one and two, I guess you could say. So now let's go back, let's put our reference back up, let's go to our real drawing layer. <clears throat> now we're gonna give it the, the wings. Basically these are like wings. So this is petal one, petal two, and three. Think of them as the arms of the flower. So um, let me make sure I'm on, I'm on my drawing layer. I've got my 6B pencil, and I have to go back to using black. Okay, so I'm gonna start right in here, and I'm gonna draw this wing. Now I could do a lot more ruffles on there if I wanted to, and I'm gonna draw this wing. That got a little bit too, let me redo that one. Okay, let me turn the photo off so you can see it better. Let me go to layer three with my red and talk about what we just did. So step one, circle with this, I don't know, this shape. Then you got this triangle. Then you got these wings. Okay. Um, Go back to our drawing layer, turn our reference back on. Now I'm just gonna add two more petals. This petal um, happens to come over this petal and that's important because anytime you wanna create depth, you want something to overlap something else. So I do want to do that. So this petal literally might come up this way. Oops, I'm in the wrong color. So 
So I'm gonna do this petal now, and it might come up this way. You know, all the petals come out of this center dot. Um, so it might come up this way. Maybe, maybe the back of this petal is such that we can't even see. Um, let's do this, let's do another fun thing. Let's add another layer. <clears throat> and we're gonna draw this petal, um, <clears throat> the whole petal as if these other ones weren't there. So maybe the way this petal looks, maybe I'll use another color for it. I'll use uh, brown. Maybe the way this petal looks is it comes out of here, bends around this way, comes up this way. So if I turn off my other layers, that's the way that petal would look. What we're noticing is that it overlaps, it goes over this petal. So if I go, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the, the uh, last petal right here, this one. I'm gonna do it on this. Um, where's my brown? I guess it's this one, right? It's my brown layer, yeah. So for this one, <clears throat> kind of same thing. I'm gonna draw it as if it's coming out of there. It probably goes like this. You can't see it behind those other petals, but that's probably what it does. Right? So here, you know, you have a unique view that you're seeing. You're seeing the petals, but really you're seeing the entire petal, but really you wouldn't really be able to see this right here. Let me erase it. This really wouldn't show, right? <clears throat> because it's behind. This really wouldn't show because it's behind. This wouldn't show either because it's behind. So sometimes, I don't know, it's just good to, to understand you know, you're drawing. It's good to understand how the thing works. So anyway, I'm gonna go turn this layer off. Or did I put it on the wrong thing? I guess I did. No, I want layer two. I'm gonna turn that brown one off. Go back to my real drawing. Put my reference back up. Oops. Go back to my black and my 6B pencil. <clears throat> and what I wanna do now is, oh, let me erase this. This really wouldn't show right here, right? Go back to my pencil and I'm gonna start this petal there. And what I wanna show you next is a fold. And then here's the last petal, comes out of there so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a couple of observations with you. And, um, and then go into a full, uh, explaining how to do a fold. I don't know that we really see a fold explicitly on here, but I'm, we're gonna fake one in. So, okay, what we wanna notice, a lot of being an artist is observation really focusing on details, really letting yourself observe and take in all of the qualities of your subject. And um, so one of the things that's really noticeable, I think, what are some things that you guys notice um, about the qualities of this flower? Um, oh, hi, Alicia saying something. Let's see if I can read this. I know I love pansies. The pansy was the first flower I ever piped for a cake. <laughs> I made 80 of them. Oh my goodness, took me four hours while they were drying. My two black labs are them all wax paper too. Oh, I was so mad. They ate them? I had to pipe 80 more. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Holy cow. All right. Well, a couple things I want to I want to point out about the pansy anyway. What I notice is um they are triangular petals. So let's go let's go here to our layer 3 and we're going to write down things we notice. Maybe I'll go to inking and use a technical pencil. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Inking technical pencil. So we're going to we're going to just kind of talk about some qualities of these flowers. Um, yes, the highs and lows of the petals. Uh-huh. Okay. Let me erase this. Um, go to some type here. Technical pen. The, the, of oh, the petals. <laughs> the petals. <laughs> Yeah, there's different highs and lows of petals. All right, well, let's first, the main thing we saw was that it's triangular. Triangular petals. Um, and then the other thing, okay, highs and lows. I'm not quite sure what you mean by highs and lows. Um, but the, the one thing I notice is that this, the, the, the end of this petal, look at where it comes out of the first petal. You know, like if this is petal number one, petal one, petal one, what I'm noticing is petals two and three they come out at a certain, they touch the first one at a certain place. The petal is um, a certain percentage of it, like is cut off by the first petal, you know? So you've got overlapping petals. Maybe that's what we want to say, overlapping, the way they overlap. Not all flowers have overlapping um, petals, right? So there's this certain degree of overlap. See, that part got cut off. And, you know, oops. Right? And same thing with this. It comes, this one comes out like the halfway point of this one. It touches the halfway point of this line. This comes out of the halfway point of this section this comes out of the halfway point of this section. So I don't know what I would call that, but um, that's a pretty cool observation. Um, this, if I look at this line from here to here, petal number three doesn't come out of the halfway point. It's maybe two thirds of the way down. But over here, Petal number four comes out of the almost the halfway point of petal two. Same thing, petal five touches onto petal three at the halfway point. These two touch in the halfway point of this line. For some reason, that's something that I noticed, and it's a very important characteristic of pansies, which is very unique to the pansies. So um, I think I want to make a note about notice. where petals emerge, I'm gonna call it. Where petals emerge from other petals. That's what I'm talking about with that. Um, what else do we notice? Yeah, okay, Tammy, that's a better way of putting it. Thank you. The, the ridges, there's the, I'm gonna call them ruffles. Um, there are three front petals with one pattern and two large petal and two larger with larger petals. It's a two part flower. Oh yes, that's a very good point. So we're going to get into talking about, um, 
that's almost like the color of it in, in a sense, I think. But as far as line qualities and drawing qualities, the last point we want to make, I think, is that there are, it's important to have these, these um, ruffles. So they are also ruffled petals. Ruffled petals. So it's all about the petals. Now, let me just say, you could, you could also put a um, fold in here. So if I were to go in here, let's erase this, I could fake a fold in here. It doesn't really truly have one, but for the sake of drawing, I thought I would just show this. So basically you'd have a line that goes like this. And then if we zoom in on this, oh, let me do this a little bit better, a little bit more noticeable. And then I would do this. So that is a ruffle. There's a front side to it and a back side to it. Everybody get that? And anytime you can do this, it's that same thing we were talking about. When you can put something in front of something else, I'm putting, I'm creating, I created a dimension just now. I actually created dimension. So this is another dimension you know, this is another dimension from this. <clears throat> and what I would do is um, maybe pull, pull this line down into there. And maybe on this side, I would create one going the other way. And to me, this is the fun part. This is, this is just so much fun doing this. So I could do the same thing. I just created a dimension again. That's not as clear, is it? Let me redo that one and do it a little bit better. So it's just like doing a banner. Okay, so, so we got ruffles and we can also do, um, uh, what do you wanna call that, a fold? You can, you can add folds to your petal. And okay, so then let's talk about what Alicia said. Alicia said there are three front petals with one pattern and two larger with that, that really are, honestly, typically these back two are more of a solid color, typically. And um, when, I, when I took my years of oil painting classes with Nancy Medina, she had a cute way of referring to pansies she called petal one the pants, and then she called petal two and three the wings, like it's an angel. And so let me just do a, another layer on here to show you what I'm talking about with that. So layer five, let's use uh, purple or something. And um, I'll use my, so, so this would be the pants. Pick a prettier color. Bigger, bigger. This would be the pants right here. Picture these as being pants. And then these are like wings. And you know, some pansies have these more deliberate than others. That wasn't a real good color to use, was it? <laughs> Pants and wings. That's what I'm trying to point out there. Um, all right, turn that off, put this all back on. Um, so yes, it's, it's like a two-part, um, it's like a two-part flower for when you're color, oops. Uh, what do I wanna write this on? Layer, which part has my notes on it? This one, yeah. So it's got, it's like a two-part flower. Two-part 
two parts. So I'm gonna call it, you know, the pants and wings. And then the two um, almost solid color, the two back up back there. So um, then the other thing I want to talk about is the veins in there. And, and let's go a little bit deeper about the color that we've got going on. So um, let's see. I'm just going to delete this layer. What do I have on layer three? That's getting a little confusing. I can delete this layer. You guys talked about that already. So let's talk about value and color now. And one thing I wanna say that I noticed is um, this actually has a white outline on it, <laughs> which really makes it very, very pretty, this reference photo. I, I, it makes it um, easy to draw. I mean, there really is a white outline there, which I like. I mean, right there, look, there's a white outline. So that white outline would be the very last thing that I would add. And the way that I would paint this, mm, and I'm just learning my way with painting um, on Procreate. But the way that I would paint this, I would probably start with a middle tone of pink, like something in this value right here. Um, I don't know. Let's see if I can do something like that. Pink. And then let me go get a um, acrylic painting, acrylic paint. Okay, here's a really big brush and it's kind of opaque, I mean translucent. So here's a really big brush of pink. Um, I'm gonna go back to this layer and make it not so, oops. <laughs> I made it invisible. I'm going to make it not so visible. Oops. I'm trying to I'm trying to reduce my opacity here. Sorry. There. Okay. So now I made it not so opaque. Um, I don't know. I was just basically so excited about using this that I didn't really think about actually painting it in acrylics. You mean on Procreate, Lisa? I'm kind of just uh, having fun showing you guys this. I hadn't really had any plans. Do you want me to paint this in acrylics? Tammy says desaturated pinks of the midtown in the shadow area. Yeah, desaturated. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I'd call them desaturated, but there's like three main values in here. Um, oh, here's a nice. Is this the color that I used? Oh, let me get on the right layer. Oops. See, I did that on the wrong layer. You always got to make sure you're on the right layer. So I think I would start with like a mid, uh, this mid-tone pink. So let's say we just did um, the entire background in pink. This would be like using a, a ground. You know, 
This would be like just laying in my ground of pink. My pink paint, right? Okay, so that's what I start my canvas with. Oh, okay, I didn't know if using this to prep for a painting. No, I'm just having fun showing you, showing you guys um, drawing a pansy and basically explaining some of the theories of, um, in this method to see how you guys like it. <clears throat> All right, so now I can go back. Um, now if I go back and put that on there, I can't see it at all. Um, let's see, so if I put my layer two on though, with my drawing, this would be like me sketching in my, um, my drawing that I did. So I can go on to this layer and actually draw that in, but really what I wanna do is start painting. So, um, if I turn this off, I can go back to seeing this. I can basically add another paint layer. Maybe that would make it easier. This will be my, my paint layer. Okay. And um, so there's three main values. This was my background color. If I go to that, I can pick a, a darker, more vibrant uh, color like this for right in here. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to round brush now. And I don't know, yeah, that's a little too small. Get a little bit bigger. Yeah, maybe that's pretty, pretty good. Well, that's, um, that's not bad for the sake of what we're doing. It's not perfect, but that's okay. So um, with my round brush, with this color, let's come in here and do this sort of thing. And my paint strokes are going to be in this direction. Right? Same thing on this petal. Paint strokes kind of in this direction. Now it's overlapping and it's causing me a problem, but I'm, I'm going to fix that in a minute. But the paint strokes are very important on this, as you can see, the direction of the strokes, because one of the other characteristics is that you really do see the, um, the veins in, in these flowers. Now, maybe for these back two flowers, I would I, uh, petals, I would probably choose a slightly different uh, color. Let's see if we were to use this, maybe. Then I'm gonna take the same color and bring it over into my first two for harmony. The same more violet color, you can't see it too well, but we always want harmony, so we always want to um, kind of walk that color around in different areas. All right, so if I, were to, if I were to turn this off so you can't see this, now you can just see what I've painted so far, right? And the, there is this blending tool so I can I can I can use this blending tool on my paint layer now to to blend all of this and soften all of this. Isn't this cool, what you can do with this program?
and and you you're basically doing this when you're painting also you when you're painting you know in 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 real life you can do this blending right at the time when you first put those strokes down you would you would blend like this immediately you would soften your edges immediately And again, my strokes are all going to the center point. And of course, same thing, when I'm painting in real life, I turn my painting to make it comfortable for my body, my wrist, my, my hand, you know, and make it comfortable, comfortable for myself. So I actually kind of really like this effect of um, how it pulls the white in in reality, what I would have to do, you know, if I go back and look at my reference, um, turn the opacity back up so you can see it. When I look at my reference, and I really zoom in on this, there is a white edge. There is, you know, so I would basically paint some white on the edge and then pull it in. So let me show you that real quick. It, the adding the white is what's gonna make this flower. So, um, and actually that would be the end step. I know I love digital art too. So we did our middle value, right? Let's go back. Let's do the white later. Here's my paint layer. <clears throat> um, so I definitely need this darker value in here. And, and um, Tammy referred to it as a desaturated pink, like a mid-tone desaturated pink. When you squint down, you see that there's a really nice dark, um, desaturated, you know, cr cranberry-ish color. So we definitely need that darker value. So let's go create that now. Uh, maybe it's going to be something like this. I have no idea how that's going to look. Oops, I'm in the always on the wrong layer. <clears throat> My paint layer. And so then right here, um, let me turn this off, it's too confusing. So right in here is where I'm gonna have that dark value. Um, what brush am I in? I'm in the round brush. So I might start with that blend it. I don't think it was anywhere near enough. So let's go a little bit darker. blend it you know so now we're getting there I don't know that I have the right shape let me go look at my reference it's a pretty yeah it's about like that I don't know that I have that do I uh, yeah, actually, I'm pretty close. It kind of flares out a little bit more. See how it has these little wingy things? So now I want to get that in there. Right, so maybe now I want to go just a little bit more. Saturated in my color. And let's see. Oh, I got to turn this off. I just can't see. Okay, my brush is a little too big. Let 
Charlie's here. So now I'm kind of making these little flare parts go up. Okay, and then I'm ready to blend blend this in. And I'm, it's just like you're pushing and pulling. Okay, and then there's veins. So I would do that to all three petals. And the back petals, I'm not gonna do as much. They're just not as, as um, I don't want as much detail on the back petals. That's one thing I notice. Um, I mean, yeah, they do have veins, but. Okay, so the other thing that I'm noticing when I go back and look at my reference, there's actually a light desaturated white in here that I want to get in there now. So let's do that, and then we're going to add some veins. Uh, okay, so back on my paint layer. Turn this off. Oops. So in right around here, I'm actually going to add a lighter color again. Let's try that. A little too, I don't know what, not the right color. Now that's my white white. I don't want a white white. I want, um, oops. Let's see how that is. A little bit smaller. I mean, it's just kind of right around there. Something like that. And then I'm going to blend and soften that. So I'm softening the edge of that area. On both sides. Soften, soften, soften. And that kind of worked, I think. And um, then if I go back and look at my reference again, I see that there is an even darker value for these veins. So I'm gonna add that in now. Let's go back to our paint layer. <clears throat> Pick an even darker color, maybe that'll work. And that's going to be my veins. And again, <clears throat> I want to make sure I follow the right um, direction. Maybe it could be even darker than that. That looks about right. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. This really is pretty much a line. So just pay attention to, you know, exactly how these lines form. I may have done too many, I don't know. All 
right? Something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, they literally... Got this cool sounding bird outside. Every morning I hear him. I, I, <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. So, and then those lines also would carry through. These lines would carry through the petal, but I can't really use the same darkness in these areas. I would have to change it. So like maybe right around here, if this, this continues like this, let's say I want to continue some of these all the, these veins all the way to the tip. I'm going to have to change the color of the vein also. So let's try this. I have no idea if this is going to be the right value. Probably that's too dark. All right. I mean, I do see some of it over here. I don't see them that dark over there. So over here, I'd pick something a little bit lighter and pinker maybe. Maybe those are a little too, I don't know, bright. I'm not sure. Let's see, let's turn our reference off and see. I mean, that's not bad. And then the other thing, um, there's this beautiful yellow in here. It's almost like, uh, you know, X marks the spot for you blind bees. <laughs> Follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> so we're gonna put that nice um, yellow in there. It's like a yellow orange on my paint layer. Get that painted in there, am I? Am I there? Oops, I have the brush really small. Maybe right here it's an even brighter yellow. And then there's a hint of green around the outside of it. Right, is that what it looks like? Something like that. Um, there's also a hint of green on that back petal. <clears throat> so let's put that in there this petal right here. Um, not sure what I'm doing. Oh, there it is. Hint of green back here. That's going to help kind of put that behind, right? Blend that out. That helped differentiate that, right? So I guess that's what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to see what you thought about this type of, um... oh, now when I put that on, let's see what happens. Oh, so now I put my outline on, right? And my and paint my background, and then that would be my negative uh, painting. So let's do that. Let's put our um, our white outline. I'm gonna turn layer four off because it just blocks everything out. Um, all right, so I'm gonna be on my paint layer.
See, this is my drawing. I'm gonna hide that. Go to my paint layer. I don't have to hide that too. Okay, I can kind of see it, <laughs> barely. All right, so now I'm gonna do my white outline. So this would be the last step of my, my painting. And I'm gonna use a white white. And I would basically just load my brush with white paint. So let me see if I have an acrylic. I've got my round brush, acrylic paint. And I'm just gonna come in here. Let's start over here. Oops, too big of a brush. And then I'm gonna take and pull that in. Pull that white in. Just like that. Once in a while, I'm gonna make one pull more. I'm gonna pull one deeper into the flower. Oh, just go to the App Store and look up Procreate, Denise. I think it's, I wanna say it's $10. Yeah, just go, do you have, a, are you, uh, do you have an Apple? Do you have an iPad? I bought my, um, my husband got me my Apple Pencil from Costco. But anyway, you're starting to see the effect, right guys? You know, and of course I can come in and, um, you know, add more subtle, subtle things like this all throughout. I mean, you could just totally really get into all this and oh, that was a little too much. Um, but the white is what really makes it, right guys? Let's go back, do I have this? I mean, the white is what really, really makes, oh, that's the wrong way. This is this petal that does this cool stuff. This one I didn't really work on. So, yeah, what did, what did you think? And then the, the other really cool thing, let me just show you everything that we just did here. Oh, wait, we do one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. So then to really make this pop, I can paint the background around it. So I can do my negative painting. I can go get a green. and I can paint um, green around this. There's probably a better way to have done this than I'm showing you right now, but I probably would make a mask or a fill layer or something like that. But just for the sake of this, I just wanna, you know, really quick, oops, too big of a brush. You know, so then you would just, paint, paint the whole background in around it.
Well, you don't need to see me do all that. You know what I mean, right? And that really makes the um, really makes the whole thing pop a lot more. Okay. Oh, uh, one one last thing. I'm going to show you the video. What's really cool is I can show you a. Um, I can replay the whole thing, everything we discussed. So, I mean, it's kind of a cool way to do a lesson, isn't it? Anyway. Yeah, what did you think of that? Does that, is that, I don't know, is this kind of thing helpful? Oh, let's see what Lisa said. <laughs> Hi guys. If you were doing this in watercolor, you'd either need to leave the white areas out or use white gouache. Yeah. After it's dried. Yeah, for sure. Um, the other thing, Lisa, Acrylic paint looks really works really well on top of watercolor. You know, you could seal the watercolor portion and um, add your white acrylic on top of it, and then you could still come in and add watercolor on top of that acrylic later on. Have you ever done that? I love doing that. You know, or gouache. Yeah. Isn't it a cool, it's an, I mean, it is a very powerful, powerful program. Ugh. Denise, it's a, man, wait till you see the stuff people do on there. It's like, pff, holy cow, awesome. Yeah, so, I don't know, is there value in teaching a lesson this way, you guys? I kind of think there is. Because what's cool about it is that it just automatically gives you a video, you know? So, um, yeah. And really, if you're going to do any teaching or, or even just doing the artwork, what's nice about Procreate is that you can look up a, a photo, bring it in on your base layer, and just trace over it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right? How cool is that? And you know, if you're if you're teaching a class and you want to be able to give a traceable, pfft, you know, you do it in five minutes. You just trace the thing and save it as a PNG, save it to your pictures. You got your traceable. It's so easy. Uh, this is the biggest tablet that you can get. Uh, this is the uh, iPad Pro. I think I think it has to be an iPad Pro to use the Apple Pencil. And I, I, I don't know if there are other pencils, Lisa. Um, were you the one that said you don't want anything um, Apple in your house? No, that was Alicia. <laughs> Poor Alicia. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, no, this is this is an iPad Pro. It's not just for the program. Okay, good, 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 good. So, um, yeah, because what I was thinking about for May, for flower, I'm just, I want to do flowers already. <laughs> I know it's April showers, bring May flowers, but I'm ready for the May flowers. How about you guys? <laughs> and um, I want to start drawing flowers. Use the big pencil. I use the big, I use the pencil and mine is not that big. Oh, do you have this app and everything? You have a, you have an Apple Pencil, Denise? <laughs> Yay. Um, yeah, and you know what? If you ever get to the point where your pencil isn't working and you're like, what the hell? What's wrong? Why isn't this working? Tighten the nib. See if the nib, mine came loose and there was like a 
little space there. I thought that was how it was designed. Oh, my makeup, I smeared my makeup. But it was because it became, it got loose and I couldn't figure out what the hell I was doing wrong for the longest time. So anyway, all right, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, oh, you lost me? Okay, you're back. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, uploading videos. You have a, yeah, there's a pocket procreate. Maybe you have pocket procreate, uh, which I don't know what the difference is. Pocket procreate, maybe that's for using on an iPhone. I'm not sure, you know. But I wanted to talk about uploading videos. Tammy, you were having some trouble. Um, I forgot about getting my Google, getting your Google account verified. YouTube won't let you upload a video that's longer than 15 minutes if they haven't uploaded your, I mean, if they haven't verified your, your Google account with, with YouTube. So you gotta do that. You probably already have done that. And um, of course, the other thing, make sure you're not timing out on your computer because your, your computer might be set to sleep after 15 minutes or 30 minutes. So you gotta make sure you have that turned off while you're uploading because uploading could take hours to YouTube. And um, which I, I think you already know that. And um, the other thing, everybody's home right now. Everybody's on the internet. I mean, everybody is on the internet. So. I'm gonna guess that that's affecting internet speed for everybody, you know? I just trimmed my hair, do I need to trim it again? Ugh. Well, this is my hair when I, um, I didn't put any product in it and um, it just doesn't, it looks a little funky when I don't put, I didn't put any, I usually put, um, and by the way, a little hairstyling tip, <laughs> you guys, always, always put product in your hair, always. Put either a mousse or an oil, you know, like a something with silicone or um, a blow drying lotion or something like that. Something that'll that'll make it have heat memory, and then blow dry your hair. Now I didn't blow dry my hair yesterday. I took a nice hot bath and took a nice nap yesterday. Yesterday I got up at three in the morning, so I was pooped, you know, by mid afternoon and. Um, and then I got that Calm app. I'm trying out the Calm app. Um, Trish suggested that. And I really like it. I really like it so far. They tell you bedtime stories. <laughs> they had Matthew McConaughey telling a bedtime story. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, yeah, and then so I got out of the bathtub and I didn't even bother putting any product in my hair and I wrapped a towel around it and then I just kind of <laughs> laid down for a nap and my hair was crazy being wrapped in a towel. When I took the towel off, it was crazy, crazy. This morning I just flat ironed it and put a little bit of uh, oil in it. Uh, you know, I have like a, I forget what it's called, but you just put like one drop in your hand, stir it around and just, you kind of just do this, just get it on the dry ends, especially if you're about to flat iron and then and then flat iron. And it kind of protects your hair, having a little, that's the reason why you want something in your hair. It protects it from the heat, if you're gonna apply heat. Always, always, especially if you have highlights in your hair, you always, always want to put some sort of protection coating on your hair. Little hairstyling tip. <laughs> <laughs> so what else you guys what else do we want to talk about I don't know that um, Tammy is even still here Tammy didn't say anything about the videos maybe I didn't need to talk about that who's here still so do you guys want to do pansies are you inspired to paint some pansies now <laughs> uh, I said I was gonna go live yesterday on my page I didn't I was so tired uh. I'm so bad. I am so, so bad. Oh. Yeah, you wanna paint pansies? Alicia, share something. When you did that icing, oh my God. Share. Do you have any pictures or share how you drew them? 
Yeah, you want to... I know, but I love pansies. Pansies are so, so cute. <laughs> um, well, okay, what should I do? Should I, should I... Should I show how to draw a pansy? I could do this on my main page. I could do, I could actually do what I just did in here, how to draw a pansy and then um, literally just take it and sketch it onto a piece of watercolor paper and paint it. Maybe that'll be what I do real quick today. And oh, there's other pansies in here too, by the way. What's your favorite pansy color, you guys? I mean, I love the, the warm and cool purples, right? Oh, just gotta love that. Magenta makes the perfect pansy color. I still have the film undeveloped. <laughs> Aw. Um, let me show you my other pansy pictures that I found. Oh, I only have one or two. Here's this one. Look how pretty this one is. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? I love that one. Yeah, the yellow and purple, right? And I mean, that is just a gorgeous yellow orange in there. And I want to do something with pansy leaves. I mean, this is, you know, actually, this is not a typical pansy, but you know what? This was the perfect reference for drawing a pansy because of those nice white outlines. That's why I picked that one. I don't, I don't particularly love the colors in this one, you know? In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a pansy that color. But, um, and then I wanted to see pansy leaves. And so that's showing pansy leaves. And then I saw something else. I don't know where it went. I guess I didn't save it. Um, maybe doing a pansy spray. You know, I, I love you can create traceables. I know. And letters, right? Yeah, I know, right? It only takes me a couple minutes. If you guys ever need something, just let me know. You know, I'd be happy to do that. I can make a traceable for you, you know? I mean, it's so fast. So, okay, um, I wanted to, there was something, oh, here it is. Look at this. Oh, look at this. I think it's where they placed them down dry. But I love this little arrangement. Wouldn't that be a cute, that's where they, what do they call that, flower pressing? They just pressed that in. Here's another one next to it. Um, oh, look at this one. Look at that one. So I wanna do like a pansy spray maybe. Hold on, I'm having a hard time with this. This is kind of cute, this one. Of course, it doesn't look good on the white background. Yeah, if you want me to do something for your challenge, Lisa, sure. I would be very happy to do that. Now, this would look much better on a colored background, wouldn't it, you guys? Or else, if the pansies were a more vivid color, they would really pop right out of there. But look how cute the pansy leaves are. So I could show how to, you know, Unless you want to do this for your watercolor, Lisa, I won't. I won't do this on my for my in acrylic. I don't know what you want to do yet. So if you're doing a pansy, I won't do it. And I won't do it on my page in acrylic. I'll do something else. Um, I also really love poppies, or I could do um, like a daffodil or something. I don't know. So yeah. Oh, look at these yellow and purple ones, you guys. Look at these. <laughs> How cool is that? Love, love, love pansies. Um, I 
And of course, if you go look up Pansy Art, oh my God, there's just so much gorgeous stuff out there that people have done, right? Here's one where you can actually really kind of see the angel. Ay, ay, ay. I, I actually can see an angel in there. You guys see it? <laughs> like a little angel in there. I love these colors too. It's like a little pansy angel. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. All right, what else do we need to talk about today, you guys? Yeah, Tammy must have left. Maybe she got another call. Um, well, if you guys like this, man, I this is so fun for me. I will do more sketches on here. Is there something in particular that you'd like for me to draw? Oh, okay. Tammy, you are still here. Good. Yeah, pansy angels. <laughs> anything else? Anybody else got anything going on? Lisa, how you doing on your challenge? How's it going on your challenge, girl? Actually, I'm dying to paint a pansy now. <laughs> Maybe I will paint a pansy after all. Even if it, even if you do do a pansy, it's not gonna really matter, is it? I don't think so. Cause you're gonna do it in watercolor. I don't know. I don't know. I'll call you, Lisa, and see what you think. So, yeah, maybe. Oh, look, I've got geraniums here. It's the old one. I don't, I don't even remember when I did this. Okay, Denise, you gotta run. Have a really great day. Thanks for uh, joining me here. And did you guys know that this is one of the lessons, the geraniums in a water pot? Um, in a, I think it's a water pot. This is one of the lessons. Yes, Lisa, your dogwood was gorgeous. It turned out so beautiful. <coughs> oh my goodness. Really, really nice. Great job on that. Um, well, geraniums would be a good one to do. Somebody once told me that they think geraniums are like a grandmother flower. And it's stuck in my head, and I'm like, is it really? Um, and somebody else said that they're all over Europe, especially Italy. I've never been, so what do I know? This was a really interesting color study that I did a while ago. Oh, let me turn it around. You're going to finish it today? Okay, good. Where we basically took... You love geraniums? Yeah. Took some red-violet mixes. Oh, geraniums are your... Fa okay, so everybody loves geraniums. So isn't it funny how sometimes somebody can put like a negative thing in your head? Um, they're coming back around? Okay. I picked a color for last May and did this. Basically came up with mixes for doing, oh God. Um, making your own neutral. Wait, how'd I do it? Making a neutral out of these colors. And look how harmonious this whole thing turned out. So this was just like a live that I did a long time ago. I don't even know where it is anymore. <clears throat> Do you guys ever see this? Do you guys remember this at all? I don't know if you guys saw that, but that was 
a pretty cool lesson, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm good at doing color charts. Uh, thank you. Geraniums are coming back around. Could be, really could be. Ay vey, you guys. Um, all right, so I don't know why I'm leafing through here. Here's a chickadee. Um, this was part of the, the lesson. So yeah, we're gonna do our chickadees. I gotta get painting on that today. But what I'm gonna do to make it interesting for myself is I'm gonna use that new, my new palette colors. You know, because, and that's a that's a good thing to do. You, maybe you've done a subject once or twice or a couple of times. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it anymore. Just do it differently somehow. Do it in a different color or something, you know? All right. Um, seems like we're all doing pretty good, right? Everybody's doing okay. And um, I think I'm gonna let you guys go. And that's it. Hopefully you are inspired to do some pansies now. Um, should I should I download or should I give you guys a, a tracer from this or do you guys know how to do it now from this? Do you want me to output a PNG file from from this uh, from this? I don't know if I do I have a completed outline? Like I could go to layer two. I'm gonna turn off my paint layer. Turn off layer four. Nah, I don't know that you really need this, do you? I mean, you could literally take a photo and tape it to a window, you know, and get your get your tracing paper out, trace over it. You know, it's another way to do it. If you want a traceable on this, just let me know. I have a feeling you guys could probably draw it, um, you know, with a, with hopefully some deeper understanding now that now that we've gone through and done a little lesson on it. And if there's a, another type of flower you want me to do um, tomorrow, um, just let me know. I think another flower that can be a little bit difficult is the daffodil. You know, we could I could do the daffodil tomorrow or or something else. So I guess that's it, you guys. I'm going to let you go. Love you all very much. Thank you for being here. Have a great day. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.